Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Budapest and welcome to Hungary. I'm so happy to see so many familiar faces in this building of the Central European University, where I graduated actually in, uh, in, in 2001 as a historian. In the same, not the same building, but just the building beside this. Uh, but at the same time, you have to know that this uh, university is not a university anymore here. This building is not a campus anymore. Uh, unfortunately, now it's empty of students and empty of professors because um, the CU has, was forced to leave Budapest and now it relocated to Vienna. And to be in this beautiful but empty building, it also represents where we are in Hungary, you know, that uh, we are sliding from a democratic country to something else. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, this same very hostile atmosphere which the deputy mayor was speaking about is also felt in the drug scene, in the, in the, dr in, in the harm reduction area. So, uh, among other things, uh, harm reduction is also a taboo word now in Hungary. So, if you really want to get some, secure some funding from the government, you don't even use the word harm reduction. Um, and, you know, at this same university, we had summer schools, drug policy summer schools every year uh, for, for many years. And we always took uh, the students to a vibrant harm reduction, ha vibrant harm reduction scene uh, to, to visit sites. And uh, as it was mentioned before, several of these programs just closed down. So they don't exist anymore. Um, and uh, only a few services are, are left to, to keep harm reduction alive. Uh, and the civil society organizations often feel isolated and intimidated. Uh, so that's why your presence is also very important. Uh, if you walk in Budapest today, or yesterday you walked on the streets of Budapest, you just see uh, you know, the trendy cafes and the shiny surface of a let's say, normal European country, but you don't see beyond the surface. And, you know, some really frightening things are happening in this country, uh, which we call the shrinking space. We can call it the shrinking space for civil society. So there is, like, less space for organizations like mine. They're often scapegoated uh, as foreign agents. And, um, and, and there is less uh, space to think, to educate, to care about other people. Uh, and just right now, for example, the government is creating a new law uh, just to monitor civil society organizations that are critical to the government uh, because they say that they are endanger the sovereignty of the country. Uh, and just another example, LGBT, speaking about LGBTQ issues in schools is prohibited in Hungary now. So, yeah, there, there are some some really negative trends. Uh, as a filmmaker we, with my colleague Istvan, we had the opportunity to travel to many countries and to uh, interview key stakeholders in many of, your, of the countries you came from. So we, we had a chance to have uh, insights to how drug policies are made in other countries. Uh, Katrin also mentioned that uh, uh, this year, together with Correlation, we conducted a study, a uh, focus group study in four countries. I will speak about that later in the afternoon. So I, I really get, uh, had, a, had a kind of opportunity to have an in insight into drug policies in different parts of Europe. And, you know, we live in quite different uh, realities in Europe. Sometimes I f feel that we live in parallel universes in, in, in Europe. Uh, the, ch the challenges and the opportunities are quite different in different parts of Europe. Uh, in some parts of Europe, especially in the West, uh, but I also include here Czech Republic and Slovenia. Uh, now there is the real question is how you mainstream harm reduction, uh, and the real question is uh, innovation, so how you introduce innovative harm reduction programs. Uh, and um, it's like, uh, uh, even in the north, northern part of Europe where there was a very strong abstinence culture, now you see that things are changing to the positive direction. There are like new uh, drug consumption rooms and uh, even in like Iceland or Norway, which were very like bastions of abs abstinence culture before. So we see a lot of uh, positive trends. At the same time, if you go to the eastern part of Europe, you still see that the question is not innovation or mainstreaming. 
question is still the question of Hamlet, to be or not to be. So it's like a question of survival for harm reduction. And, um, and the after the retreat of international donors, uh, several U very important programs were just collapsed in the region. So we have many empty seats where people could sit now who were working for programs which don't exist anymore, harm reduction programs. Uh, so we have to be aware of, of, of that as well. And of course, the war in Ukraine just complicated the things further. So some of the harm reductionists in the Eastern Europe, they, they actually fight for their lives and not for the, just funding. Uh, and, you know, even though the Iron Curtain, which separated East and West, collapsed uh, many years ago, but there is still an invisible, invisible Iron Curtain when it comes to innovation and harm reduction. So if you, if you look like where are drug checking services or you, you look at the map like drug checking services, drug consumption rooms, how many drug consumption rooms you see uh, in, the, in the eastern part of Europe, not many. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and you know the real problem is that innovation would be very badly needed also here in this part of Europe because the, the drug scene is changing very rapidly. So when I started to work in this field in the early 2000s, uh, most harm reduction programs were focusing on like white, middle-aged, heterosexual, male, heroin injectors. And now this is changing. So, you know, there are new drugs are coming, uh, new groups of people entering drug use with different routes of drug use, different, completely different uh, uh, context um, and, and, and quite new, new, new patterns. Uh, so there are new psychoactive substances, crack cocaine, smoking, snorting, minorities, elderly people, chem sex, deep web markets. So there are a lot of new challenges and new opportunities as well. So it's like, I think we are, we are in a crucial time where we have to also define what harm reduction is about uh, and offer something relevant to people who are not the, you know, the usual crowd of our services, like not, not you know, white male, mid uh, heroin injectors. So how can we offer something relevant? Uh, and that's why we need a lot of innovation and out of the box uh, thinking. You know, when harm reduction was created back in the 80s, 90s, then it was done from out of the box thinking. Like, you know, first needle exchange was opened in a toilet and so it was like a guerrilla creativity, urban creativity of, of, of like people who, who were really try to find solutions. And, um, and I think we can, we can apply the same principles of pragmatism and, um, and compassion to, to this new, new phenomenon, new kind of drugs, new kind of groups of people uh, to offer them something relevant, which is maybe not needles, but something, something else. And, uh, and something which is relevant in the East and the West and the North and the South. Uh, so uh, maybe we, we, we should think outside of the usual HIV prevention and overdose prevention box sometimes. Um, so harm reduction is so much more than just needles and, and medicines and, uh, and overdoses. So for me harm reduction uh, is a different way to ask questions um, from people. So not to ask like uh, what's wrong with you but ask what happened to you. and. Uh, not to ask, uh, can you become someone, uh, someone else who, 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 who can be helped? But you ask, how can I help you now at where you are? So that's a very different approach. And, and, and this is what is the, 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 the core of harm reduction. And uh, harm, the harm reduction is not possible without a very li living connection to the community of people who use drugs. Uh, we are, as human beings, we, we are born to create connections with each other. And um, if we are isolated, we, we just can't work and we die. And uh, in many countries, I don't see these connections, even though the harm reduction system is quite advanced. So even, even when I go to the West to film, I see some countries where there is an advanced uh, health system and, uh, and like services are available but you don't really see the connection to the community, to the people who they serve. And, um, and it's sometimes the harm reduction system is organized in a very top-down way, you know. And, uh, and pro programs are operated by smart and humanists, but still technocrats, you know, uh, who have sometimes no real 
idea what's really happening on the, on the scene on the ground. And uh, so we need this kind of living connection. We need to support communities to self-organize. Um, and, and, and we need correlations, as this network is about correlations of different fields, different uh, professionals, disciplines, and different uh, levels of decision-making. Even in Hungary, where we are now, there is a very hostile atmosphere, but, uh, but uh, you can find opportunities to work with, uh, with some communities, some decision-makers. You could see with the deputy mayor, with the city of Budapest, we could establish a good cooperation. That's an opposition leadership now in the, in the city of Budapest. And uh, I'm the head of the working group on harm reduction in this uh, uh, drug forum of Budapest. And, uh, and we have been working with the city to create a new drug strategy now. Even if the city has not much resources, but it has some you know, symbolic support at least to people working in this field. And uh, it creates a platform for us to you know, speak about issues and challenges. And just two weeks ago, we debated the, uh, the Budapest drug strategy, the draft with the chief of the police, the Budapest police, who's very much against harm reduction. And we discussed it for two hours. So it's a great opportunity to educate you know, the police about harm reduction or, you know, this meeting just created a, an opportunity for us together with Euro Input to uh, organize a workshop for uh, people who use drugs. We don't have an organization of people who use drugs in Hungary. So we invited uh, clients of uh, OAT programs. Uh, surprisingly, nine people showed up, very enthusiastic people, and we could create the first network of people who use drugs. Uh, yeah. It's still informal, but let's hope that it will have, it will grow something formal as well and, and permanent one. Uh, so I, I really see that there is a power in communities, even in, in dark times. I think we can we can believe in that. And uh, regardless of all all these uh, different realities we live in, we have more or less the same struggles everywhere, the same everyday struggles. Very boring. You know, you have to mention. What, why harm reduction works, as Tony said, the thousands of times, and you are so bored, you know, that you have to use the same arguments to the same stupid counter arguments, and you can really get consumed by this uh, everyday struggle. And uh, it's also sometimes it's easy to forget our own mission, like that's it's about uh, it's about uh, re uh, reminding uh, the society that mm, people who use drugs are people. That's a very simple thing, but it's very easy to uh, oversee or overlook that. And, and um, uh, it's difficult to stay motivated in this everyday gray struggles. So, um, so yeah, yesterday we had a lot of discussions why, why correlation, what correlation is good for us and how, they can cor how correlation can contribute to the work we do. And of course I believe that uh, there are many things like the data collection and technical support and research and, uh, and training and all this stuff. And I, I believe that's very, very useful and important for us. At the same time, the main benefit for me to participate in this network and, uh, and participate at events like this is to, uh, is to be reminded after this everyday struggles, this gray uh, time, that we are not alone. So we are, uh, we are part of something bigger and uh, and uh, also we can uh, speak to people who understand uh, each other and uh, we can speak to people who finish the sentence with, uh, after you because they know what you think about um, and and also we hear we come here to make new uh, connections and correlations and sometimes that's I think this informal conversations are the most important so thank you for coming here and, uh, and please recharge your batteries before going home and, and continue the, the everyday struggles you are in. I love you, thank you very much. <laughs>